the Arcebo Observatory has fallen. This marks the end of a nearly 60 year skygazing career that has not only helped us better understand the universe, but has also scoured the skies, searching and listening for any signal from extraterrestrial worlds. So what exactly happened to this one of a kind behemoth structure? So what we know right now is that the destruction of this iconic observatory was due to multiple cable malfunctions. The National Science Foundation hasn't given any further details about the fall, but we do know that at the beginning of November 2020, they'd actually been discussing plans to safely decommission the observatory by gently lowering the central platform. But unfortunately, nature had other plans. And luckily, no one was harmed in the collapse of the observatory. But sadly, this ends an era of space exploration. The initial idea for Arcebo actually started in the 1950s by Professor William Gordon from Cornell University. Gordon had the desire to study the ionosphere, which is the layer of our Earth's atmosphere that can actually reflect radio waves. The funding for this revolutionary project came from the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, or DARPA, in 1959 when Cornell University signed a contract to conduct development studies centered around large-scale radar probes. Four years later, in 1963, construction was completed in the limestone hills of Arcebo, Puerto Rico. The completed project featured an 816 metric ton equipment platform, which was suspended over 150 meters above its spherical reflector. This reflector measured 305 meters, making it the largest single radio telescope of its time. Well, that's until 2016, when China developed their own single radio telescope called the 500 meter aperture spherical radio telescope, or FAST. And as the name implies, it is nearly 200 meters larger than Arcebo. But did FAST send one of the very first radio messages ever into deep space? Known as the Arcebo message, it consisted of 1,679 zeros and ones arranged in 73 rows and 23 columns. The bits form pictures of a stick man, the radio telescope, a DNA helix, the solar system, the numbers 1 through 10, and a few other things. It was then broadcasted into deep space toward the M13 star cluster which is actually found in the Hercules constellation. The famous 1,679-bit picture was intended to demonstrate the tremendous broadcasting capabilities of Arcebo while also potentially contacting any extraterrestrial life living within the M13 star cluster. <laughs> That's pretty freaky, huh? And to make things even cooler, in 1992, Arcebo changed our understanding of space forever when scientists used it to discover the first exoplanets or planets outside of our own solar system. This discovery came more than 2,300 light years away, orbiting a pulsar named PSR B1257 plus 12. And if you're wondering what a pulsar is, it's a neutron star, which is actually one of the densest known objects in the universe. But unlike regular neutron stars, pulsars actually give off regular pulses of radio frequency, which can be picked up by the highly sensitive antennas on our SIBO and the discovery of exoplanets gave scientists around the world confirmation that there were other orbiting bodies outside of our own solar system. Since its initial construction, Arcebo had actually gotten upgraded to make it even more impressive. In 1996, the Gregorian Dome was added to the Arcebo Observatory. This allowed it the unique ability to transmit radio waves and then receive the reflection from other objects. This was done using a series of mirrors to focus radio waves both in and out of the dome. Scientists could then set the receivers to monitor asteroids. And when it comes to planetary defense, ignorance is definitely not bliss. To date, NASA has actually identified nearly 25,000 near-Earth objects, thanks to the help of Arcebo and other instruments. The loss of Arcebo is huge in the astronomy community, even sparking the social media campaign hashtag what Arcebo means to me. But now the astronomy community is moving forward by trying to replicate some of Arcebo's functionality in other instruments. As for me, I'm personally looking forward to using the technologies we have today to continue our exploration of the galaxy through radio frequencies. And who knows, maybe we'll develop an even better version of Arcebo in the future. Did you know that Arcebo was built into a natural sinkhole? For more space content, check out our other video on the rocket fuel that could take us to Mars. Let us know if you liked this episode in the comments below and make sure to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.